quick recording of the uh, neural network from Anduin, of course, built in Excel uh, on Sheet and very little VBA. Uh, but it's slightly more nerdy because I'll talk about the code and the Excel behind it and what goes into it. What you're looking at is a thousand iterations. I put an extra ring in the middle and they're based on circles with a slight random scatter and it found it really well. And if you um, if you uh, initialize that, so set up all of the uh, the, the uh, parameter arrays and then run it again, you see it, it quite impressively um, locating the central thing. So it's now it's scrabbling around trying to find uh, anything that can can bite on on uh, on this distinction between the red and the black dots. But you know, really, it's using a cost function. It's an exorably kind of working its way to the minimum of the cost function um, with backprop, and you're going to see it slowly find that. Um, uh, 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 the, the function that will I, I ID the, the red dots. So the model comprises uh, three sheets, and I'll talk you through those. There's the two neural networks. The, the, the mod is the core model with the back propagation, which allows the neural network to learn. And the BOU, the boundary, is a neural network without back propagation that uses the parameters that are learnt on the mod tab and it uses them to categorize as either red or black uh, every single one of these kind of pixels. So what I've got here is uh, um, an XY plot of, I think it's 625, I think it's 20, well, there, there, there's a matrix of dots that I put on, on, on here and uh, that uh, uh, allows me to effectively make a boundary diagram for the for this neural network. So it's no progress, it's kind of stuck um, here, but I'm hoping to see some point of inflection at one point, so I'll pause it now. So um, uh, quite good, it's, uh, the, the curve's bitten, and it's now quickly learning the function that will separate the, the, the red from the black, and you can see that developing as we speak, as we move through 650 iterations. Uh, and uh, ultimately, I, I kind of, uh, it's, it's gonna find a function that uh, identifies um, red versus black. Um, these dots are moving randomly, which is quite an interesting idea. Although the, the function behind them, which is a circle with some random scatter, is constant, the random scatter is meaning that the, the, the neural network is trying to learn on a moving set of data. And, I, and, and you see, I think that's why we're getting quite a kind of um, a rough uh, learning curve. Um, this is it rounding in on the last... Um, uh, 50 iterations, and that's as good as it's going to get in a thousand iterations, which is quite impressive because uh, a thousand iterations is far less than the uh, pure gradient descent version. This has uh, momentum built into it. So if I start now that the model's finished running with the, the boundary diagram, that will give you an idea of what we're doing. So here we've got 625 um, uh, pixels. Um, on, on my uh, cross plot, that's 625 pixels, I've got XY coordinates, and uh, the neural network is doing a Y equals MX plus C, here's the X, here's the M, here's the C, to give you a Y, the, the uh, relu on top of it makes it um, uh, nonlinear, uh, and then the next layer takes the output of the first layer and goes y equals mx plus c, and there's another relo on that, rectified linear unit, which makes it nonlinear. And then the final output is uh, exactly the same, output of layer two, uh, m and, and c, and the, um, uh, the activation function on this is, is a sigmoid, because it's a binary classifier, and that is apparently the best way to go. Um, so what the binary classifier is, is, uh, is doing, the sigmoid, is saying, you know, what's the probability of it being a, a, a one or, or, or a zero? And, and that one or a zero allows us to print it as either a blue square or a, an orange square. So that's the neural network that doesn't learn. But how does it learn the parameters uh, that, that go into the, the boundary? So the, this is the model. This is layer two, the parameters, layer three, and layer one parameters. And, and this is where they are. So blue is an input. These are hard-coded. Uh, and uh, same pattern, the forward propagation, y equals mx plus c, but this has got back prop. And the back prop, if you imagine, starts from the lost function. Uh, and the, the derivative of the lost function uh, is 
uh, y hat minus y. So that's what's going on there. That is the, um, the y is, is it a one or a zero? And the y hat is a three, the output of the, of the third, neuro, uh, third layer. And then we just continue the, the back prop. So there's the back prop of the layer three parameters. Uh, there's the uh, back prop of the layer two function. Uh, and then the uh, 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 back prop for layer one. And these are all straight from, from Andrew Ang's equations. It's pretty simple to put in. I guess uh, it's interesting because it's vectorized, because it's handling all of the cases at once. Um, but it gives you a function which slowly optimizes to zero. And that's effectively it, because each step, each iteration, uh, this incremental layer here, this is the new version of that. So this is the... The base version, start of the iteration uh, of the Ws, this is uh, the, the updated version. And what you've got is layer one. So the order of that is layer one is this section. I've combined the, the, the C, the, so the, the, the offset with the gradient, into a thing called layer one. So layer one minus the learning rate, which on the dash would set the learning rate really high to 0.5, uh, to um, uh, uh, times... The, the gradient layer. Now, this isn't actually looking at the gradient layer. This this um, uh, this would be the the, the gradient to dw1. So that uh, let me just that's grads one. That layer is called gradient one. So that would be the gradient if we weren't using the momentum. But instead of looking at grad one, I'm looking at copy layer zero one, which is momentum. Now, momentum just takes the gradient layer and it adds an exponentially weighted sum of the previous gradient layers, which are stored up here. Um, so what you do is you, you get a weighted view of the gradient, which if the gradient's changing sign, it zeroes that out, and it gives you the kind of net effect of the last five or 10, 10 gradient. So it smooths things out, and particularly when you've got a massive learning rate like this, it's really useful. And, and that is effectively it. I'd love to uh, cooperate with other people on this, I'm interested in, in making it uh, fully iterative so that we don't use the VBA, and the VBA for this is, is dead simple. There's a embarrassing bit of uh, stamping to initialize it. And then the learning can be as simple as this. Layer 1 is equal to the incremental layer. But I've got a, a different neural network which has got some ugly stamping. So every 25 or so um, uh, sets, it stamps the learning curve. But the, the only really interesting bit is this bit where the uh, layer one, that's the weights for layer one, become the incremental weights every step. So every iteration, we update the layer. That value range equals that value range. And on the model, you will see that what's happening in the case of one is layer, layer one is being updated with the incremental layer, which would be uh, that, which is copy layer one or incremental layer. Uh, no, sorry. So that's the, the processing of the gradient. And then I've put the incremental layer uh, here. Yeah, it says incremental layer. So that's the ink layer. And that is the uh, layer one. And back on the VBA, you see that layer one becomes the ink layer every time there's a calculation. And that is it. Um, please feel free to comment. I'd be interested to know what you think.